The topic of allotropes comes up quite frequently in chemistry. So in this video, we're going to define the term allotrope, and then we're going to look at some examples and then practice to make sure you can remember and recognize what allotropes are. So we have a definition for allotrope, and then we have these two substances, diatomic oxygen gas and ozone gas. Based on this definition here, pause and figure out, are these allotropes? Well, first off, we have the same physical state. They're both gases, so that fits our definition. Then they're made up of the same element. We have oxygen atoms here and oxygen atoms here. The red, those are the oxygen atoms. So it's all oxygen atoms. And finally, they have a different structure. Two oxygen atoms bonded. It's a linear molecular geometry. Here we have three oxygens that are bonded. We have this bent molecular geometry. So they have different structural forms. O2 and O3, those are allotropes. Carbon, which is frequently used as an example in chemistry, has a number of allotropes. So here we have four major allotropes of carbon. There are many more. So for example, we have graphite. It's all carbon atoms, but they're in these sheets here. And these sheets of graphite, they slide over each other. Like in a pencil, it slides over the paper and it creates a line. So graphite is one allotrope of carbon. Another allotrope of carbon is diamond, diamond-like in wedding rings. And here, again, only carbon atoms, but they're arranged in a different orientation than we had with graphite. They're both solids. Graphite, diamond, nanotubes, and Buckminster fullerenes are all solids. So this is an allotrope of carbon. Nanotubes as well. There are these tubes formed of carbon atoms. And the Buckminster fullerene, C60, 60 carbon atoms bonded together to form a sphere. So these are all allotropes of carbon because they're all solids here. They're all made up of only carbon atoms, but their structures, their structures are all different. So answer this question. Water, H2O, liquid, and then hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, which is a liquid. Are these allotropes? Pause, give it a try. While they're both liquids, so they have the same physical state, and they both are different in terms of their structures. The problem is we have different elements here. Water is not made up of the same element. We have hydrogen atoms and oxygen. Same here for H2O2. We have these oxygen atoms, but then we have hydrogen atoms. So these aren't allotropes because we don't have the same element making up each structure. So H2O and H2O2 aren't allotropes, but what about S8 and S6? We have octosulfur and hexasulfur. Here we do have the same elements. Each one's made up of only sulfur. They are the same physical state, although it's not written, they are both solids, and they do have different structures. So these are allotropes of sulfur, two common allotropes of sulfur. So far we've only talked about nonmetals bonding together. What about metals? Let's look at iron. So for alpha iron, we have a body-centered cubic structure here. You see we have this one right in the middle, that's iron atom in the middle, and then we have these around it. For gamma iron, we have these atoms arranged differently. This is called a face-centered cubic structure, and these have different properties, both chemical and physical. They're allotropes because they have different structures, but they're all iron atoms, and they're both solids. So these are allotropes of a metal. So to recap, allotropes have different structural forms, but they're made up of the same element in the same physical state. This is Dr. B with the definition, examples, and some practice with allotropes. Thanks for watching.